Hi everybody, uh, welcome to this uh, massive open online course on solid fluid operations. This lecture is about the brief introduction on the solid fluid operations. This solid fluid operations is sometimes called mechanical operations also. As we know that uh, in our daily life, we are using several products like cosmetics, like different chemicals, oils, even food items, pharmaceuticals, uh, drugs, etc. So, all those products uh, basically comes from uh, industry after producing with a certain process. Now, those process includes generally different multi phase systems either in terms of chemicals, particles and other different equipments by which we are getting these several products in our daily life. Now, whenever the industry they are making these products, they use solid, liquid and gas and also combination of those systems by which after a certain process we are getting this product. Now, question is that then why we are going to study this solid fluid operations? Yes, it is required to study the solid fluid operations because all those products those are producing by a certain process and those process involves this solid fluid. Now, this solid fluid operations of course, will be a based on interaction between solid and fluid. Now, before going to the solid fluid operations, you will see that as a pre treatment of that solid fluid operations, the solids to be you know processed or pre treated up to certain degree. So, that the yield of the process involving solid fluid there will be giving a certain degree of yield. So, before going to that we have to know this different types of processes of solid and fluid where this solid 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 liquid interactions are there. So, let us see in this lecture what we can learn uh, about this, this solid fluid operations. First of all, we will introduce different solid fluid operations and their respective applications. So, you will see that the process which are based on interaction of fluid like gas and liquid with the solid particles are called solid fluid processes. And there of course, the interaction not only with the solid and fluid, there will be interaction between solid and solid also. So, the process whenever it will be performing with those solid and fluid, the processing will be based on that you know what will be the size of the solid, how to transport that solid for that particular process unit and to utilize those uh, you know sizing solids after transportation what degree of that size to be considered. So, that is why sizing of the solid it is very important. So, the process of course, will be applied with the sizing of the solid. Then chemical synthesis in the presence of catalyst particles, you will see that whenever any process to produce any chemical products that you are going to synthesize that chemicals based on certain chemical reactions and for that the enhancement of the reactions or activation of the reactions. Or, or you can say that producing that chemical products the catalyst particles will be uh, very very uh, important for that uh, reaction. Then you will see that we need to have some important minerals from the ores that is uh, you know available nature. So, in that case you have to beneficiate that ores or any other uh, particles or materials from which you are getting the important or valuable uh, minerals. So, you have to process that resource materials 
or ores you can say to get that you know uh, uh, important minerals. And also you will see that sometimes you need to you know separate or recovery that valuable uh, solids from the ores as well as the slurry uh, which is coming uh, necessarily. So, in that case it is also important to process. So, this process basically are uh, you know involving that interaction of the solid and fluid. Also you will see that drying of solid there of course, you will see that whenever you are going to you know uh, dry the solid material there will be interaction between gas and solid because hot gas or you know that some warm gas or warm air to be supplied to the wet material to you know evaporate the moisture inbuilt in the solid. So, that is why it is called a solid fluid operation. Also you will see that sometimes you need to coat the particles okay, with a polymeric substance. So, coating of the solid is also uh, a solid fluid operation. Sometimes you need to you know enhance the reactions or enhance the physical processes like drying or other physical operations there uh, it is important to enhance the mixing of the process mixing of the you know solid and uh, liquid. So, they are mixing uh, is also uh, called a solid fluid operation. You will see that we have different you know contaminants in the you know waste water or in water which are actually uh, being processed for further uh, operation uh, for using our daily life. So, in that case uh, some you know contaminants that is uh, poisonous or unwanted materials which is to be separated. Uh, so, that separation of that materials from the slurries or uh, waste water or other effluents uh, that is done by membrane. Membrane is a solid material which is porous and through which that you know contaminants can be separated just passing through it. So, these are actually process uh, which applied in different you know operations like sizing, like synthesis, like beneficiation, like drying, like coating, like mixing, like separation all those things. So, you will see that here how the solid particles are fluidized in a fluidized bed uh, system. This is actually a catalyst particles so, there you will see that catalyst particle enhancing the reaction for uh, producing that you know different types of you know uh, hydrocarbons. So, you will see that uh, the here uh, uh, solid particles are being fluidized by air or gaseous medium. So, in that case to get the better mixing as well as heat and mass transfer of that gas liquid operations we are uh, you know processing like this uh, between the solid and uh, liquid and there will be interaction enhancing the interaction between solid and uh, liquid that is contact between solid and uh, liquid or gas to get this we are actually uh, designing different types of units like one type it is called the fluidized bed reactor or chemical reactor or star tank reactor like this. So, they are uh, the solid particles are you know come in contact with the uh, liquid or gas to produce the different hydrocarbons. You will see that whatever you know uh, solid fluid operations uh, that are involved in industry to produce the different products that can be you know uh, classified broadly into a certain categories like some will be mechanical, some will be electrochemical, some will be chemical processes. Mechanical uh, processes may be you know that the transportation of materials, size reduction and its enlargement sometimes it is required to reduce the size of the particles to get the better uh, interfacial area or more surface area of the uh, catalyst particles or solid particles for that uh, particular processes either in chemical or physical. Then sometimes it is also required to enlarge the solid particles uh, like you know manufacturing of tablets they are uh, you will see that uh, you have to enlarge the uh, solid particles uh, just producing from the you know uh, different uh, contaminants or uh, different materials and also getting that uh, you know uh, materials as a tablet but just by enlarging. Also you will see that in urea uh, you know production you will see that uh, granulation process is important where the molten urea to be you know granulated uh, in the presence of you know uh, cold air medium. So, they are uh, it is called that size enlargement you will see that also other operations like mixing, filtration, decantation, sedimentation, flotation and fluidization all are those uh, in the category of mechanical operations. 
And then electrochemicals like electrostatic separation sometimes very fine particles to be separated which is coming out from the you know equipment uh, when it is processed for producing different products. So, they are those particles to be you know separated uh, before you know releasing to the atmosphere. So, there are uh, sometimes some mechanisms to be followed that is called you know electrostatic separation and sometimes uh, to uh, separate that you know magnetic particles from the other mixture of that you know particles. So, uh, magnetic separation can be performed there. Sometimes you will see that electrodialysis to be uh, performed to separate that ions from the you know plasma liquid like this. Even electrosmosis, electrophoresis, ion exchange, gas permeation, power vaporation, all are the operations are under uh, electrochemical processes. Then chemical processes we are having some crystallization, drying, leasing and extraction, adsorption, chromatography, fissure trough synthesis, even you know that production of different hydrocarbons. So, these are uh, under the chemical process. So, we can uh, classify those uh, solid fluid operations uh, into a broad way like uh, uh, mechanical, uh, electrochemical and chemical processes. You will see in the pictures here uh, that uh, you know mechanical processes you will see slurry transport. Sometimes you need to transport the slurry from one location to another location. So, this is basically a mixture of solid and liquid. So, it is called slurry. So, transportation of this slurry is also called the operation of solid fluid. Similarly, you will see that solid transport as a bulk of solid you have to transfer from one location to another location for further processing. Then crushing and grinding you need to have that particular uh, size or at a certain size uh, you have to convert the you know coarser particle to the finer particle uh, by a certain mechanism. So, uh, sometimes you will see crushing and grinding will be the you know main mechanism by which you can get the you know uh, finer particles. Then mixing there will be certain mixer by which you can get the mixing of the solid and solid even solid and liquid and then filtration you need to you know separate that unwanted material from the you know mixers. So, by which you can separate uh, that valuable components. So, for that you need to have that filtration process. So, filtration process is also one of the important mechanical process that is under solid fluid operation. Similarly, fluidization by which you can do the drying operation, you can do the you know production of you know various hydrocarbons in presence of catalyst particles. Even some other operations also can be done like uh, you know coating of the materials, uh, granulation process, even uh, you will see that uh, other uh, you know segregation of the materials by this fluidization process. So, fluidization also important mechanical process. Then decantation you have to separate the solid particles by gravity. So, this is the decantation process. Then uh, minerals recovery by froth flotation uh, from the uh, ores that is also important operations to you know get that uh, different valuable minerals from the uh, sources of you know uh, ores uh, by froth flotations. This is basically that uh, get in, in you know uh, froth uh, you know producing froth and uh, producing that bubbles in, 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 in presence of surfactants you will see that the air will be distributed through the surfactant solution to produce that you know uh, bubble and its surfaces and on the surface you will see that there will be a uh, uh, you know attachment of that hydrophobic materials on the surface of the bubbles. Then that hydrophobic materials should be separated from the mixture of hydrophobic and hydrophilic materials. And this froth flotation basically the process by which that hydrophobic materials can be separated from the mixer. These hydrophobic materials uh, this is the valuable uh, minerals that can be you know separated from the ores. And then electrochemical processes, you will see that different electrochemical processes like electrostatic separation, magnetic separation, you will see that uh, electrodialysis, electroosmosis and ion exchange. So, these are the uh, different you know electrochemical uh, processes. And then uh, you will see that uh, chemical processes like crystallization, drying, copper extraction, adsorption, even a uh, trickle bed reactor even a slurry bubble column reactor these are uh, different you know processes by which you can get that uh, different uh, you know uh, hydrocarbons even uh, you will see that separation of the you know unwanted gas from the gaseous mixer mixer and also you will see that drying operations of the solid material uh, moist or weighted solid material to be dried in a particular you know drying uh, equipment crystallization copper extraction 
and also in the, the production of hydrocarbons or hydro treating in the trickle bed reactor. Even uh, slurry bubble column reactors where the gas liquid uh, solid reactions will be there uh, in this reactor by uh, you know which you can get that uh, different hydrocarbons or cracking of hydrocarbons in the slurry bubble column reactor to produce different hydrocarbons. Then uh, another important operation is called particle separation like uh, you know uh, different uh, uh, processes are there to separate that uh, particulate materials from the mixers uh, either from the you know gaseous uh, mixture or uh, from the slurry or uh, you can say that other effluent systems by there will be separate uh, mechanism uh, to separate that particulate uh, materials like gravity chamber based on the gravity that particles uh, can be separated. And cyclones uh, also you will see that uh, the uh, centrifugal force by which you can uh, separate that you know uh, materials based on its you know gravity action as well as you know that size of the particles. And also you will see that uh, there will be back filter uh, which is being used uh, for the separation of the particulate materials by uh, you know membrane uh, inside this uh, some uh, cloth type of membrane will be used uh, inside uh, this that is called back filter. And also electrostatic precipitation where uh, some ionic uh, uh, particles to be produced whenever it will be passed through a you know some uh, electrode and then whenever it will be uh, you know ionic then opposite charge particles uh, also or uh, plate will be you know uh, surrounding it which is to be separated by just attracting this opponent uh, you know uh, charges. So, it is called electrostatic precipitator, uh, precipitator. So, all those you know processes will be uh, discussed in details in the successive lectures here also. So, this is just a uh, brief uh, introduction about this uh, the different solid fluid operations even spray towers uh, as a scrubber you can use and then back filters are uh, used for the separation of the uh, particulate material. Now, uh, the process what are the process that involves the transportation of the materials sometimes you will see that conveying, conveying is the process by which you can transport the material from one position to the another position. In that case engineer sometimes prefers to transport in the form of liquid solutions or you know that suspension system. So, in that case the choice of the equipment that depends on the necessary capacity, uh, natural shape and size of the material the distance through which that materials to be transported that also uh, you know effect on the choice of the equipment by which you can transport the material. Also uh, you will see that uh, different systems like different equipments like pipelines, pumps, fans, blowers, compressors are used in industry to transport that fluids finely divided solids in the form of slurry or solution from one point to the another point. And solids that are not finely crossed are transported by railways, trucks, uh, ropeways, ships or conveyors like this. So, there are uh, different types of conveyors uh, are available uh, commercially or uh, can be designed to transport that solids from one position to another position. Now, what are the processes that involves uh, the size reduction you need to sometimes uh, reduce the size of the materials to get the better yield for the particular process. Also for the synthesis of the process you will see that the materials as a catalyst to be used. So, you have to use that catalyst at a, at a particular uh, size range. So, there you need to you know uh, reduce the uh, particles into a uh, certain size. So, in that case so the process of particle size reduction to be you know performed and that process is called uh, comminution and uh, the primary uh, comminution process uh, are called crushing and grinding. Size reduction uh, mainly uh, occurs by compression, impact and attrition mechanism and uh, uh, crushing you will see that it is the process of breaking material into the desired size to a you know uh, specified size range you can say where you will see that uh, you may uh, expect that there will be a certain uh, range of that particle size with a certain distribution. So, uh, sometimes to produce that particle size in such a manner that it will get the uh, it will it will give the you know uh, uniform in size where that uh, narrow particle uh, size distribution will be there. So, in that case uh, crushing is one of the important process by which you can get. And then grinding also uh, it is a process of surface generation it is called by producing micro and nano size particles. 
you will see the several uh, type of crushing equipment are being used uh, in industry to produce that particular size of that material. In that case, uh, it depends on the which mechanism that you would use to reduce that size. Based on compression mechanism, you will see that uh, in industry uh, the jaw crusher and cone crushers are uh, being used uh, to produce that particular size. Even based on impact mechanism, you will see that uh, bar blow crushers, vertical uh, you know shaft impactors, uh, those are being used for that uh, reducing the size. The most common types of uh, you know grinders sometimes uh, used to uh, reduce the particle size into a uh, you know micro or nano size. Those are uh, you will see that gear grinders, different types of mills such as ball mills, rod mills, pebble mills, even uh, you will see that bar stone tower, gap, blade mills. These are the different types of mills those are being used in industry to you know have that particle uh, in a size in uh, micro or nano size region. Then process involving mechanical separation, you will see that uh, sometimes you have to separate this particle uh, or segregate the particle into a different sizes. So, for that you have to use some uh, mechanism, it is called uh, screening. It is basically the process of segregating that solid particle into multiple grades according to their opening you know sizes. And the crush, uh, you will see that after crushing, you will see that some materials will be coming in a mixer. So, that mixer will have some will be coarser particles, some will be you know that finer particles. So, coarser materials or coarser particles, those are above 250 micrometers is suitable for screening as its efficiency uh, decreases with the decreasing size of the particle. And also another important uh, process, it is called classification by which you can segregate the materials. It is the process for uh, separating uh, mixtures of particles into two or more fractions based on the velocity with which the particles fall through a fluid medium. You will see that uh, finer size below about 250 micron is uh, normally processed by this classification process. Now, you will see that important uh, 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 notes to be uh, you know remember that the different types of screens are generally used in industry as well as laboratory. Those are called stationary screens, uh, vibratory screen and rotating screen. So, all those things will be discussed later on the uh, successive lectures in details with problem and solution. Now, filtration process, this is also one of the important you know solid fluid operation based on which you can separate the solid particles from the solid fluid mixer by a filter medium. Uh, for that you need to have some driving force to you know pass the liquid from uh, one uh, uh, you know part of the you know separating medium to the another part of the se uh, separating medium. There you will see that separating medium uh, it is called you know uh, filters. So, there are different types of filters generally being used. Those are called cross pro filters, cake filter, uh, you will see the sometimes uh, syringe and capsule filters you will see and also membrane. Now, uh, all those you know uh, filters have some uh, you know advantage and disadvantage based on the particle size which are to be separated and uh, you will see the cross flow filters is basically uh, the filter designed to concentrate suspensions of fine particles or colloidal type materials. Okay. It is generally used for you know particles in the range of 0.1 to you know 5 micrometer and uh, it is generally separated by the porous uh, tube filter and micro uh, straining filters etcetera. Cake filter generally a cake is uh, act as a filter which is formed by the accumulation of the solids on the septum like filter press, shell and leaf filters, rotary vacuum filters etcetera. Membrane is one of the important you know separating medium, it is called filter medium. Different types of membranes made of different types of material such as silver, cellulose, nylon, ceramic etcetera. So, these are the different types of membrane by which you can uh, you know separate that you know particulate materials based on the you know porosity or you can say that uh, pore size of the membrane. Then uh, you need to you know separate the particulate material from the uh, atmosphere or from the effluent or gaseous effluent in the industry. 
where you will see several types of you know a uh, very fine micro or nano type particles uh, will be there in the gaseous mixer. You need to you know separate those you know poisonous gaseous materials from that you know effluent. So, in that case you need to uh, have certain you know uh, mechanical devices by which you can uh, segregate or separate that particulate matter. Now, you will see that sometimes that particulate matter is denoted by a conventional uh, symbol as PMD. For example, PM 2.5 is referred as particulate matter where the diameter of the particles is 2.5 micrometer or less. Particulate matter is uh, a solid you know uh, particle or liquid droplet that will have certain uh, size like uh, 10 micrometer in range in diameter or less you can say in the suspended uh, particle in the atmosphere which is called as uh, you know aerosol and this particulate matter can be separated by various methods like wet scrubbing, cyclones, candle filters or a combination of these sedimentation, filtration and uh, also you can say biological treatment. Then another important operations it is called settling and sedimentation or thickening you will see that uh, to you know uh, separate those you know materials from the slurry. So, settling and sedimentation are the process by which particulates are separated from the fluid either by gravity or by centrifugal force. Gravity settlers, centrifuges are generally used to separate those particulate materials in this operation. Thickening is a gravitational settling of solid particles that are you know suspended in a liquid whereas classifications imply fractionation of the solid particles based on their rates of flow or settling you know through fluids. Then flotation process, this is one of the important uh, you know primary operations in uh, mineral industries based on which the important materials are separating uh, from the you know ores. There you will see that uh, the suspended particles from that uh, that is ore is initially uh, grinding into a finer particles and then it will be suspended in a you know uh, liquid that is uh, you know suspended particles in the liquid based on the hydrophobic or hydrophilic nature of the particles it is generally you know separated just by attaching or allow to attach into a bubble surface which is produced from the bottom of a certain devices by gas distributor. So, this flotation is generally a process for separating the suspended particles based on you know hydrophobic or hydrophilic nature of particles by the introduction of gas bubbles. And you will see that addition of the gas bubbles to the solid particles makes them buoyant and results in separation. So, we will discuss about this flotation process later on also in the separate lectures for this uh, flotation processes. And then uh, various flotation processes you will see that uh, will be in this uh, flotation processes like uh, you know uh, uh, froth flotation, uh, dissolved air flotation, induced gas flotation like this. And flotation is done in a flotation machines which are called mechanically agitated tanks, flotation columns, Jameson cells etcetera. There are different types of flotation columns available. Then we uh, are going to that another important process uh, for the solid fluid it is called agitation and mixing. Sometimes you need to uh, you know mix the materials uh, with the liquids for producing a uh, uh, certain uh, you know uh, chemicals or synthesis the chemicals or uh, you know performing some physical operations. So, there it is important ok. So, for that the uh, some equipment to be used which are used for mixing depends on the nature of the materials. So, we will see that uh, this is basically the central uh, feature of many chemical processes like uh, you will see that for catalytic reaction in a reactors, paints and coatings, you will see the production of synthetic rubbers and resin, sealants and adhesives food processing, making juice, making candy, biofuels, ethanol and widely used in making pharmaceuticals. So, for those operations you need to have agitation and mixing process. Then some operations uh, with the solid and fluid it will be called as thermochemical processes 
like drying process is one of the important thermochemical process. It is a process of removing liquid from a solid at a temperature below the boiling point by circulating air or some other carrier gas over the solid. The basic difference from the evaporator is that the evaporator is used to remove water from solution instead of solid. In this case, the heat is supplied to vaporize the liquid and the liquid diffuses through various you know resistances. And there are different types of you know dryers are used for this drying processes, some will be adiabatic, some will be non adiabatic. Adiabatic dryers like spray, flush, rotary, tunnel, tray dryers, whereas non adiabatic dryers vacuum type, parts type, tube type, drum type, even a continuous rotary type, uh, a continuous pan type, even radiant type you know dryers are available. So, those are being used for drying processes. Then crystallization process, this is also uh, that solid fluid operation. In this case, the formation of crystals is done by precipitating from a super saturated solution that may contain dissolved solids, melts, vapor at a fixed temperature. Okay. And the process is driven by a mass transfer of a solute from the liquid solution to a crystalline phase. In this case, the first step of this process, it is called nucleation and the super saturation can be obtained by cooling, solvent and evaporation. Fractional crystallization is one of the most widely used methods for separating and purifying chemicals. Crystallization equipment is classified according to the method of generating super saturation. So, this is the crystallization process which is also involving the interaction between solid and liquid. Leasing. In this case, you will see that the process of separation of solute from a solid by an insoluble solvent, it is called leasing. Solutes are separated based on adsorption or absorption capacity of the solute to the solvent. The material like ore that is necessarily available is graded chemically with a solvent by dissolving the active or valuable component into the solvent. Like you will see that some examples we can say that grading of bauxite using sodium hydroxide solution at 150 degrees Celsius, dissolving aluminum oxide in sodium hydroxide solution, extraction of silver iron uh, from the ores, example argentite, argentite you know that uh, silver sulphide, silver chloride like this. And also uh, this can be you know extracted by this sodium cyanide, grading of gold containing ore in potassium cyanide are also important examples for this leasing. Then calcination process is also one important you know solid fluid operations where you will see that conversion of concentrated ore into oxide happens by heating in absence of air which is called calcination process. This process also helps in separating carbon dioxide, sulphur dioxide, organic impurities and moisture etcetera from the source of a fixed temperature. Then roasting process, this is also one of the important process uh, where the uh, solid and gaseous uh, materials will be interacting to each other. And in this case, you know that uh, converting ore usually sulphide at uh, you know below its melting temperature into an oxide in presence of excess hot air. It is also known as metallurgical process of gas solid reactions at a temperature for purifying the material in a blast furnace. Roasting is also referred to as frying at a fixed temperature. It is generally done in fluidized bed. As an example, we can say that roasting of green coffee bean which is being converted into a you know brown coffee bean, you will see after roasting at a certain temperature, it is generally around uh, 350 degree Fahrenheit to 500 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, the green coffee bean is being roasted uh, in presence of hot air at this temperature and it becomes the brownish dried you know uh, coffee bean. After that, it is being grind. Uh, and then uh, with milk, then you are getting the ready coffee. Then reaction process, of course, it is a process that leads to the formation of new molecules 
by the rearrangement or redistribution of the uh, constituent atoms in a particular uh, reactors. The reaction process that depends on temperature and pressure and the components or composition of the reactant mixers in presence of catalyst and you know residence time. Reactors are generally four types chemical reactor, nuclear reactor, fusion reactor and uh, bioreactor. Electrochemical processes like electrostatic separation, magnetic separation by which you can separate the you know materials from the mixer of its different uh, you know characteristics materials the, those may be non-magnetic, some may be magnetic. So, from this you know magnetic non-magnetic materials can be separated by this electromagnetic separation or magnetic separation. Then electrodialysis this is the process by which you know charged particles migrate by diffusion and convective uh, flow towards a less charged area by electro osmotic effect. And this is done uh, in an electrodialysis cell where the salt ions move over the membranes under applied the electric potential. Also you will see that electro osmosis uh, where uh, the transport process of salt ions through selective semi permeable uh, membrane. Uh, like cationic, anionic, okay. it is also called ionic exchange membrane under the influence of an electric uh, potential. So, by which you can separate that ions by this you know ion exchange membrane. In this case the motions of electrolytes and solvent are driven by an applied potential across a porous material capillary tube membrane or in a microfluidic devices. Then electrophoresis it is a uh, process of separation to separate biological molecules such as DNA, RNA or protein based on the size and electrical charges. Protein transport towards a positive charge is an example of this process. Then you will see that ion exchange here separation of the unwanted dissolved ions like nitrate, fluoride, sulphate and arsenic etcetera in water are exchanged with a you know similar charge by an ion exchange material like you know resin or zeolite. So, based on which you can separate that you know uh, different types of nitrate fluoride ions. This is generally you know done uh, for the you know processing or treatment of the uh, water or waste water for uh, you know for getting that you know purified water uh, for drinking. And also you will see that uh, the anions are exchanged to the negatively charged also. So, based on that ions for what type of you know membranes to be used that depends on that you know ion characteristics. And then uh, it is called power vaporation. This is also one of the important process where solid and fluids are to be interacting. It is the process of separation of binary or multi component mixtures of liquids based on you know partial vaporization through a polymeric or ceramic membrane. This concentration gradient you know you will see that there will be a certain concentration gradient to separate this uh, you know materials by this process. In that case this uh, concentration gradient uh, it is called in terms of partial vapor pressure acts as a driving force for the process. Then gas permeation this is the gas diffusion process through polymers include random thermal movement of the gas molecules in the polymer structure. You will see that uh, the gas mixer based on that permeability to gas according to a dissolution diffusion mechanism through a membrane is happened. The graphene oxide, rubbery polymer, membranes, material organic frameworks are the some example of promising material for the gas permeation. Then you will see that industry all those operations are being carried out to give you that uh, you know desired products in uh, our daily lives. In that case, uh, so whatever, whatever process is being used in industry, most of the process you will see that uh, uh, you know involving the solid and fluid operations. You will see that uh, the industry where the business covers this you know solid fluid operation like chemicals industry, agriculture industry, pharmaceuticals industry, paints, dyes and ceramics. Around 1 percent of all electricity generated worldwide is used in the reducing particle size. So, particle size is very important that is solid fluid operation and then impact of particulate products to the US economy was estimated to be 1 trillion dollar US dollar. 
So, this is see how uh, you know what amount of uh, energy is being utilized for this you know solid fluid operation. Around two thirds of its products involve particulate solids like powders, crystalline solids, granules, flakes, dispersants or pastures where interaction of solid and fluids are there. So, we can you know have this uh, solid fluid operations uh, based on that you know multi phase systems like solid fluid systems where there are two types there will be two phase systems gas solid liquid solid and another is called gas liquid solid that is three phase system. So, uh, in gas solid system that we have already discussed the different processes and then uh, we are having uh, some industrial applications for this solid fluid operations like particulate materials, powders or bulk solids are used widely in all areas of the process industries for example, like food processing, pharmaceutical, biotechnology, oil and chemical industries, mineral processing, metallurgical, detergent, powder generation, paint plastics and cosmetic industries. Some solid catalyzed gas phase reactions are also you know being carried out based on this uh, presence of this solid in a liquid phase like fluid catalytic cracking reforming fissure crops synthesis, production of phthalic and malleic anhydride, oxidation of sulphur dioxide to sulphur trioxide or other oxide, chlorination and brumination of hydrocarbons etcetera. Production of different hydrocarbons based on this fluid catalytic cracking by fissure crops synthesis. Then you will see some gas solid reactions there may be some combustion and incineration. You will see that gasification, coking and pyrolysis, carbonization fluid coking, calcination, fluorination, catalyst regeneration all those operations based on that solid fluid operation. Commercial applications like natural gas combustion based on which you can produce the synthesis gas like fluid bed catalytic cracking based on which you can get the different you know uh, hydrocarbons, gas, oil, even uh, different fuels by uh, different uh, hydro treating and hydro processing. Then commercial applications like physical processes like you know part particle formation process such as crystallization, precipitation, granulation, spray drying, tableting all those operation, transportation of the processes, mixing and blending, drying, coating processes, gasification, classification, catalyst regeneration, roasting all those operations these are called physical processes. So, particle separation by filtration you will see that in industry in the large scale you will see that to separate the particulate material from the slurry plate and frame filter pressures being used to separate that particulate materials from the you know slurry. So, those process will be you know you know discussed in details later on uh, in the successive lecture. Now, let us consider one process that why actually we are going to study this solid fluid operations what to be learned. Uh, what are the components why this importance uh, in the particular process. Let us consider one process of producing that hydrocarbons or fuels. Let us consider that liquid biofuels or you can say different uh, types of uh, you know fuels olefins, gasoline, diesel, wax even other chemicals to be produced. So, one process here given from the raw biomass how one can produce that liquid biofuels. You will see that in the beginning that the raw bio mass to be used okay, for the production of liquid biofuels. Now, what are the different steps to produce these biofuels from the raw biomass? Initially raw biomass from the resource that you have to take suitable raw biomass you know maybe cars grass or some other things okay, maybe wood can be used as a biomass or coal you can use. So, you can use that coal or biomass okay, to produce that biofuel. So, before that you have to you know pre-treat that raw biomass to get into a final products. So, what is that pre-treatment processes to get this final biofuels? So, initially you have to do that sizing and separation and then what is that uh, drying process. So, you have to first dry that uh, raw biomass and then you have to cut it into a pieces that is sizing and then separate that unwanted materials. Okay. So, these are the operations sizing, separation and drying all those things to be done. After drying of that biomass you have to pre-treat and you have to grind it okay. and then pre-treated biomass uh, to be you know gasified in a gasifier 
to produce the different gases. Now, after that you have to separate that unwanted gases and getting that you used gas that is called you know synthesis gas. So, that gasification will give you that synthesis gas after gasification at a certain temperature. This is around uh, you know 1600 Kelvin and then after that you have to water quench and then less than 2 uh, 1200 Kelvin temperature that is in gas to be you know adjust in a reactor to get that hydrogen adjustment to produce that you know synthesis gas. So, synthesis gas is basically the mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen here ok and then you know this uh, gas to be cleaned by a chemical wash and after that you have to synthesis by the fischer tropsch synthesis you can say. Then you will see that you will get the different hydrocarbons and then you have to treat it hydro treat in presence of catalyst particles that is carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas at a certain temperature and pressure in presence of catalyst you can get different type of products like gasoline, diesel, wax, oxygenated olefins, uh, lower olefins, uh, even other liquid biofuels also. So, then you have to fraction it as per you know uh, boiling point range and also that carbon number ranges you will get different uh, products uh, by separation ok and then you will get uh, the liquid biofuels along with the other fuels also. So, this is the uh, simple operations by which you can get the liquid biofuels from the raw uh, biomass. Now, to get these uh, biofuels what are the operations actually required, what are the processes required? All those operations are basically based on the solid and fluid operations. You will see the raw biomass you have to size it that is the sizing operation you have to separate it, you have to separate the unwanted material that is a separation process, drying you have to dry it and then grind it to make it finer particles and then gasify it you have to use uh, that particular size of that particle uh, raw mass and then you have to you know uh, pyrolyze it and then you will see that gases will be produced and then gas maybe after that in presence of again catalyst particles that interaction of that synthesis gas and catalyst particles at a same temperature and pressure you will see the different hydrocarbons will be produced. So, all the operations involves the solid fluid interactions. So, that is why you have to learn the different you know solid fluid processes or operations to get a final product in a particular you know system in a particular you know operations ok uh, in industry to get your final valuable products. So, in this case you will see that list of Indian company where FCC units that is fluidized catalytic cracking uh, are used like you will see that where you can produce different hydrocarbons like Indian oil corporations. Uh, you will see in Guwahati also uh, there is a plant Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited, uh, Mumbai Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, Mumbai Koshi Refineries Limited, you know that Koshi Bangaigao Refinery of Petrochemicals Limited, Assam Numaligao Refinery Limited, Numaligao Assam. So, these companies are you know uh, producing that fuels just by hydro treating. So, for that hydro treating it requires solid there will be interaction between solid and you know that feed stocks may be you know crude petroleum oil may be you know that synthesis gas with the you know that solid fluid uh, in, uh, you know that uh, catalyst particles. So, here you know that for that you need to size the particle you need to maintain that you know certain uh, drying operation uh, uh, the temperature or drying operation by which you can have the dried product of the solid particles and then pre-treat it and then other solid fluid operations to be done mixing also required for that. So, uh, this uh, to get the final products uh, behind there are several solid fluid operation. Now, question is that what to learn for this courses why this course is important. So, whenever you are going to produce something in, in a big scale there are several solid fluid operations processes will be there. So, you need to know that process what is the mechanism of that process and uh, to know what will be the synthesis mechanism of that you know solid catalyst particles how to characterize that solid particles what is the surface area 
and also uh, what are the different types of uh, you know uh, materials which will be suitable for that operations and also how to you know separate that particles, how to mixing that particles, how to interact that or how to enhance the interaction of solid particles with the fluids, how to separate that uh, particles by filtration or other mechanism, is there any other mechanism to separate that particles and uh, uh, for that reactions uh, what will be the heat is required, heat transfer characteristics that you have to learn, how that mass transfer happens whenever that reactions happens there. Uh, so, uh, their mass transfer operations important for physical operations like drying or leasing or extraction, how that mass transfer happens from one uh, you know uh, fluid mixer to the solid material or solid mixers that you have to know the mechanism, how to model, how to predict that you know uh, process output, how to scale up that process all those things to be known. So, that is why this uh, you know solid fluid operations are important to learn and I welcome uh, all of you to uh, you know learn these courses. So, in the successive lectures we will discuss all the process uh, whatever we have discussed here one by one in details will be elaborated and also explained uh, in the successive lecture. So, thank you in the next lecture we will uh, try to discuss about the particle characterization. Thank mm -hmm. you.